Welcome back, everyone, to episode three of the Beginner to Master Speedrun. This is a series where I start from a 400 ELO and try and work my way up to master level. In the last episode, I broke the 500 ELO, so let's keep it going in this episode. And I'm just going to hop into the pool, and we will start another game. Here we go, playing 8, Hey, Dan, 1. And I'm going to stick with E4. Uh, probably at some point I'll transition to D4, but uh, yeah, sticking with normal opening principles. Knight of three, attacking the pawn. Knight C6 is by far most common move, and I'll play uh, the Italian opening, bishop to C4. And we'll see what uh, black wants to do. Knight F6, this is one of the most common moves, probably one of the most common openings in chess not only at like a grandmaster level, but also at a beginner level. And in this position, I'm going to go for uh, basically what's the beginning of the fried liver attack, which is knight to g5. Uh, because a knight obstructs a queen from controlling g5, this is a very viable move. And I've noticed at the lower rating levels, a lot of players don't know how to deal with this uh, attack against f7. Now, there are, I'd say, probably a couple playable moves for black, uh, but knight b4 is not one of them. Uh, knight b4, I don't think I've ever seen before. Now, it is a question, do I want to take the pawn with a bishop, which is the most forcing move, or do I want to take the pawn with a knight and fork the queen and the rook? I think it's more worth just grabbing material here, because after bishop takes f7, king e7, it looks good for white, but um, I just went a pawn in that line. In this one, I'm going to win the, the queen or the rook. So yeah, after this game, I'll show what black should have done uh, after I played knight g5, because I think it's a very, very important opening for beginners to understand. Even if you don't enter such an opening too often, uh, it's important to understand kind of the defensive mechanisms that black has. So now it's a matter of um, trying to just put the hammer down and show no mercy. The knight is undefended on g4. Although this is kind of tricky, because if I take the knight, then my queen is no longer defending c2, and black can take the pawn and then win my rook. Uh, there's also ideas like if queen takes g4, there's some d5 move. So... I mean, this move at first looks like a very careless blunder, but I think black is maybe trying to muddy the waters. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and take still, because it's very nice to get the queen into play, and there's ideas of eventually queen h5. Uh, but can't do that right away, of course. Let's move the king. Opponent pre-move, knight takes rook. And now I have my queen, bishop, and knight all developed, basically. The knight might be able to play a role soon from the h8 square, but I think this is a point where I want to just pause to consider the candidate moves, looking at probably the, the checks, first of all. Like, there's bishop f7 check, there's queen h5 check. If I play queen h5, this looks good hitting the king and the pawn, uh, but then there's g6, and queen's attacked. I don't think I'm winning anything so easily there. Another idea is to just get more pieces into play. There's some idea to play knight c3, or even pawn d3. So, I have a choice. Looking at bishop f7, king d8. And that would be really nice to get the bishop to g5. So I think I'll, I'll start with bishop f7. Provoke the king to a square where maybe it's going to be a bit more exploitable. Um, Black has two legal moves here, so expecting king d8. Now, yeah, now d3. And d5, okay, so uh, discovered attack against my queen. And it would be a terrible mistake to play bishop g5, because Black would take the queen with check, and then win the bishop. <laughs> that would be one way to potentially lose a game. So I think I just want to play... A simple defensive move here, queen g3. Get the queen to safety and have the queen still support this g5 square for bishop g5. 
This is kind of a messy position, like where you each want each other's rook in the corner. I am currently up a knight, but I'm soon to be up more material opponent miss idea. And uh, yeah, this is a very common type of mistake at the beginner level is to miss the opponent's uh, simple tactics. In this case, it's a pin. And um, yeah, should be winning the queen. Once the queen is lost, then the king is going to be much more of an exploitable target. So we'll see how black tries to cope with this. I will say, though, that my opponent was like very tricky and resourceful in, in trying to muddy the waters uh, after what was definitely an opening disaster. But uh, yeah, now definitely no mercy. Let's take the pawn with check. The other two pawns were hanging as well, but it's nice to play in a forcing matter here. And there's no moves for the king. Uh, Black has to block with one of the bishops. And my goal here is to try and deliver checkmate as uh, as efficiently as possible. I play bishop e6. Bishop is pinned to the king along the d-file. And now, yeah, let's cash in. Not quite, mate. The king's going to run to f8. And black is actually threatening to play rook d8 and win my queen. So I really respect the fact my opponent's not giving up trying to create last chances of a comeback. But now it's time to bring my knight back into play, not only attacking the pawn, but preventing rook d8. And um, yeah, it's still taking a little bit more effort, like not mating immediately, but I think the plan is to eventually take the pawn. Now, I don't want to take it right away to allow rook t8. Probably want to play something like king e2, maybe even king c1, get the king to a, a safer spot. Um, if I play king e2, the knight can come out. So, I, like, I really want to show no mercy here. I'm going to play king c1. There's no bishop g5 check. So I can take on g5. Meanwhile, the knight's stuck. The rook can't really do much. And uh, yeah, let's take the bishop. And now maid is coming. Next move, regardless. There is one spike check, knight b3. But uh, okay, finally got the job done there. Before I move on to the next game, I do want to provide a very quick lesson in this Italian two knights defense opening. Whether you play this as white or play against this as black. I think it's a, a useful position to know at least the next few moves. So after knight g5, really the, the move that should be played here is pawn d5. It's the only way to essentially save the f7 pawn. Uh, I should note there is what's called the Traxler variation, bishop c5, which maybe I'll play later on in the speed run at a higher rating level. Uh, this is an interesting one. Knight takes f7, and then bishop takes f2. Black actually gets a lot of counterplay here. But um, to keep things simple, yeah, d5 is the best move, blocking the bishop. And if my opponent played this, I would have taken. And here there's actually a very classic trap where if black takes the pawn, which looks very standard, knight supported by the queen, and the queen also hits the knight on g5, white has a really cool tactical combination here, starting with knight takes f7. And after king takes f7, there's queen f3, hitting the, the king and the knight. Knight f6 is not legal because the knight is pinned to the king. And the only way for black to save the king and the knight here is to play king e6. But this walks into knight c3, and uh, yeah, white is, is definitely for choice in this position. So for any player that plays this as black, and um, maybe runs into early trouble, the best move in this position is to play knight a5. And there's a lot of opening theory from here, but um, this is really the starting point. And after bishop to b5 check or c6, many cases black does end up being down a pawn, but h6 comes and black actually gets some counterplay. So perhaps I'll have future games in this opening 
later on in the series. But for now, let's move on. Gain some rating there. New game. And again, we'll play E4. Maybe the theme of this episode will be uh, crushing beginner mistakes with 1E4. So we have a Karo Khan. Uh, I'll play Knight F3. Most players will play D5 here. And I'll play Knight to C3. This is called the Two Knights Attack. And I made a video about this um, maybe a couple years ago already, but it was a video just showing the, the strategies of this opening for white. And there's a lot of lines where black can go wrong from early on. But bishop g4 is one of the most common moves, uh, developing the bishop, pinning my knight to the queen. And against this move, it makes sense just to challenge the bishop right away and make black decide whether they want to take or retreat. And after taking, happy to take back. Basically, black just traded off the only developed piece, helped me activate the queen. And uh, this is a main line. Like, there's been a lot of games at the grandmaster level in this line. But uh, I think it's a bit easier for white to play. And after this last move, knight d7, I don't think black addressed the fact that I'm attacking the d5 pawn not once, not twice, but actually three times. My queen and pawn form a battery. I think I'm very happy to take and win a very key central pawn. So, yeah, now it's a question. Do I want to take with the knight or with the queen? If I take with the queen, I'm really putting my queen out in the open uh, where it can be attacked. But I am hitting the b7 pawn which has some merit. Yeah, I think I, I like taking with the queen a bit better. Like, there is the opening principle, don't bring out your queen too early, but there's always exceptions to the rule, and if you can bring out your queen and win material and not get punished for it, then very often it can make sense. So, just one, two pawns. Now, the queen could get attacked, but if rook b8, I can win another pawn. So black is focusing on development. And yeah, now it's a question, do I want to like go all in, play a move like knight b5, going for knight c7, or just focus on bringing the rest of my pieces into play, mainly my bishops getting castled. I think a lot of players might be attracted to knight b5 because it has this threat. But... Yeah, if knight b5, like black can play rook c8, defend, and then get the c file. And I don't want to be putting my knight and queen in a place where they can be exploited later. So I think I'd rather just develop uh, something that I haven't touched it yet, which is the bishop. The bishop finds a very nice home on b5, pinning the knight, uh, preparing to castle. I think very soon, want to play d3 or d4. Complete development. Now with bishop b4, uh, <laughs> I was inclined to castle quickly, but we should really pay attention to this last move and address the fact that the bishop is undefended. And we can also note that the bishop is aligned with my queen. And if we make these simple observations, this should lead us to just a simple tactic. I can take on d7 discovered attack against the bishop on b4. So, yeah, another uh, another nice, simple tactic to win material early. And not only did I, I win a couple pawns and the bishop, now I'm preventing black from castling. So, yeah, trying to, to be as greedy as possible in these games. We'll see, uh, yeah, we'll see how the game progresses and how White can try and convert the material advantage into hopefully an eventual checkmate. With knight d5, I'm very happy to trade. This is a case where I don't mind getting pieces off the board and, and simplifying. And now, yeah, I will castle. Now, I should note, if there's any beginners watching, uh, there's a very important rule to understand in chess, 
when a square, in this case, f8 square is controlled, you're not allowed to castle because you're not allowed to castle through check. But this is another great example where even though I was controlling the b8 square, because the king is not moving through that square, it's only the rook moving through that square, uh, casting queenside is a legal move. Now, was it a good move? I mean, to be fair, black's position was already difficult, but uh, it did get the king off the e-file. I was preparing rookie one check. So now it's a question how to exploit the king on c8. I, I think I would very much like to get this bishop into play. Uh, the dream is to play bishop f4 and queen b a checkmate. So imagine black will, uh, will not let me do that, but never know. Yeah, and generally when you castle, you want to have pawns sheltering your king. Of course, in this case, uh, black doesn't have so many pawns on the queen side. And now I am threatening checkmate in one. So from Locke's perspective, they should really make note of my last move, see what I want to do. Rook e4, target my bishop, but uh, yeah, no mercy. Queen b ends the game. And yeah, that was another like pretty straightforward game. Um, I followed opening principles early. Um, nice example of the, the two knights attack against the Karo Khan. Got the early lead in development. And I think... My opponent just made a, a small mistake early, and then it kind of snowballed into uh, just very difficult position, losing a couple pawns. This was a key position where Black should be very aware that I want to take the pawn. And I think there's a couple very fine moves. E6 generally is super, super solid, just creating this pawn triangle. And I'll give a general piece of advice. When you trade off one of your bishops, in this case Black traded off, the light square bishop, generally it's then a good idea to put your pawns on light squares. Not only because then you'll fight for the light squares because you don't have a light square bishop, but also it complements the dark square bishop. And in this opening, the bishop is very happy to come to d6, and then black is really maximizing square control in the center, controlling light and dark squares. So e6 was a fine move. Also knight f6 very playable, just defending the pawn. If I play e5, then I can come back. Very often, e6 will be played, and then black can expand with c5. So a couple, couple options for black in that opening. But uh, yeah, hopefully some valuable lessons to take away. I think I'll do one more game for this episode. I've had a couple quick ones so far. So next game, up to 5.30. Playing some name oh giddy goho from india opponent taking time on the first move and yeah i'll play e5 stick with a king's pawn opening now if my opponent plays bishop c4 i think i'll i'll play knight f6 and try and show how to play the two knights defense from the other side uh, d3, this is a playable move, although it is a slightly passive move because it blocks in the bishop. Generally, when you're white, you want to play a bit more actively. So I'm not going to make the same mistake by playing d6. I'm going to play bishop c5, get the, the best square for my dark square bishop. And now white, white's maybe regretting playing d3, plays d4. But now it's a counting game. I see this mistake a ton at um, like the sub-600 level, is sometimes players don't realize the number of attackers and defenders. In this case, I have three attackers. White only has two defenders. So it is a question which thing I want to capture with on d4. If I take with a knight, then we might just be trading pawns. There's knight takes e5. So I think I'd rather take with a pawn. Pawn is very well supported by the knight and the bishop. And let's keep developing knight f6. Just want to castle quickly. It's funny that, um, yeah, we might be transposing into like some sort of gamut opening. Uh, this move knight g5, okay, let's uh, 
a bit reminiscent of the first game I played uh, of this video, attacking a pawn on f7. Now, in this position, I think there's maybe three different moves to consider. The simplest move, I, I would say, is castling. I defend the pawn with a rook. But there's also a move knight to e5, which I think in this case is just a lot more logical, uh, very multi-purpose, not only defending the f7 pawn, but also attacking the bishop. Now, of course, this move would not be possible if my pawn were still on e5. Now white um, not acknowledging what I was threatening. Maybe they only saw I was defending the pawn. So I think every game so far, my opponents have not acknowledged my threats. And yeah, if you're stuck at like the four or 500 level, that's one of the things, one of the simple things you can do to get better is with every move, you have to ask yourself, what does the opponent want to do? Is it a big threat? And how do I deal with it? Uh, in this case, my opponent should have played um, some bishop move, maybe also defend the bishop with the knight. But uh, okay, so I'm up a bishop. White's trying to get some counterplay. Question what to do with this knight? Because g4 and h5 are controlled by the queen, e4 is controlled by the knight. By process of elimination, I have knight g8 or knight e5. There's also queen e7, which isn't the craziest idea ever. Then keep my options open for later. I kind of like queen e7. Sometimes players will play such a move to pin along the e-file with a bishop still on f8. If my bishop were still undeveloped, then queen e7 is probably not the best move. But in this case, okay, it provokes the opponent to resign. Uh, yeah, and the plan, if white was going to leave the king here, the plan was to play d6 and attack the pinned pawn. So that was uh, another quick game, another opening gone wrong. I think we'll, we'll see a lot of these sort of games early in the series of opponents um, maybe being careless, being generous in the opening, giving me free material. So because that was so quick, I think I would like to play one more game. And I do hope that even though these games are, are maybe pretty quick, I hope there's still a lot, of, a lot of things the viewers can learn from these. So now playing Borisov, underscore by, rated just below 600. And sticking with e4, and we have a Scandinavian. Generally against Scandinavian, uh, you should just take the pawn. No reason to do anything else. And after the queen takes, now we can use a queen to accelerate white's development. Knight c3. And yeah, the queen has to move. Queen a5 is one of the most common moves, if not the most common move. Uh, I know some players play queen d6 or queen d8. But the queen on a5 is not the easiest thing to exploit. There might be some viewers watching that have seen a video I made about this position where I recommend b4. I'm not going to play that in this game. I'm going to play a more standard move, d4. This is, I think, the simplest approach just to get ready to develop this bishop. Some ideas of bishop d2. Black plays e5. Very confrontational move. Uh, the pawn is defended by the queen, but I think I'm happy to take the pawn. And if the queen takes again, basically what we're seeing is black has moved the queen one, two, three times, and I'm being a bit more efficient with development. With that said, black is being aggressive. Now pinning and attacking my knight, I only have one defender. So this does require some defense. I think I don't mind playing bishop d2 here. Even though the bishops look kind of passive, they are keeping things solid. Uh, c5, not sure if there's really a purpose behind c5. It does defend the bishop, could be useful at some point. But now I'm very happy to play knight f3. I'm gonna make the queen move again. And now I'm also preparing to castle. 
And the goal in this position not only is, is to castle, but is to get my rook to e1. And because black has been a little bit slow to develop the minor pieces, if I can get my rook to e1 before black castles, then it's going to be very, very pleasant. Uh, especially if the queen and king are aligned on the file. It's very likely we'll see some potential pin, maybe some potential discovery. Uh, but this is interesting because maybe a lot of players would play rook e1 without much thought. If I play rook e1 here, black can castle. And even though I have some discovered attack potential against the queen, there's not an easy way to win anything. So instead of playing rook e1 immediately, I can kind of switch up the move order and start with this move bishop to b5. I think I'm going to just do this right away. And now black's in a situation where if they block the check, then, then I play rook e1. And I slowed black down just enough. Now, yeah, now it's too late. If they castle, I win the queen. And there's actually no way to save the queen. Knight e4 would block, but then I take e4 supported by my knights. So another opening, showing no mercy. Punishing, in this case, punishing like the typical mistake of like slow development, opponent move their queen a few too many times, paying the full price. Generally, like earlier, we just go back to the position after d4. Black should have should have played knight f6 and e6 and um, like tried to castle much quicker without just blowing open the center with e5. So, okay. So I'm going to still win the queen, winning a knight on top of it. Maybe black will get some material after take, take, and then take. But then I'm, I have some potential knight fork in the very end. So, um, yeah, some very quick games. I think the first game of this video was the longest game. But, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was somewhat of a bloodbath, this episode. But, again, very important lessons. Um, let me just demonstrate what Black should have done. If we go back, uh, Knight of Six. If you play the Scandinavian as black, this is the move to play. Um, we, I think we saw the drawbacks of e5. And from this position, let's say I would play knight f3. This is a very natural move. Um, black could play e6, but that shuts in the bishop. So generally, it's nice to bring out the bishop first. Let's say bishop e2, and then uh, a move like e6. And at a higher level, uh, most players will know to do this, but um, the general setup for black is c6, bishop d6, knight d7. Uh, very often, the queen can come back to c7, and yeah, then it's, um, it's a harmonious development for black, and there's ideas of casting kingside or sometimes queenside, depending how aggressive black wants to be. So... Anyway, um, I think I'm going to wrap it up here of uh, some some quick games, but hopefully some, some important lessons. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. If you have questions, leave them below. And I think in the next episode, it's time to update my profile picture. So stay tuned for episode four, and I'll see you guys then.